have a lot of trades to talk about. Let's get to it, Johnny. Yeah, some wild ones here. All right. The first one is with the Happy Valley Division One. The Kirkwall Cowboys has received Jacoby Myers and Demario Douglas, while the Gothen- Gothenburg Angels has received Cade Otten. Uh, just, I'm just going to jump ahead, in here yes. and just say, I feel like with the trades, we need to have a little second screen or something. Johnny can work his magic where we can see their rosters because on the face of it, with it being a tight and premium um, league, I don't get... Like, the Ra- Raiders are a dumpster fire. The... Patriots, Douglas is going to get points, but you're never really going to get consistent like 20 point games out of these two. Whereas in a Titan Premium League, Kate Otten is like Baker's number one for the rest of the year. Uh, Martin, I will let you have your go, but if you don't mind, I'll, I, I, I'm going to second Pez here. It looks like a move of desperation. Yeah. Possibly. He's 45. Uh, maybe he's had a few wide receiver injuries. Or whatever, but neither of these guys are top three guys. They're not even flex options. I've just, I mean, I, I do not play either of these. <laughs> but he is a cowboy player, right? so I feel like he's just got Jerry Jones in his ear saying, "This is a good trade to make." Get it done. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what do you think, Martin? Am I am I way off base thinking that? <laughs> well, I went over these trades yesterday, so I'll try and be brief. Um, but I do. I actually didn't mind it. Because I'm assuming, obviously, the court will cut. If they need wide receivers, and and he's and he's fighting, he might have a like. Orton wouldn't have been a first pick tight end. He would have been like a like a a backup. So he might have somebody really uh, somebody really good there at tight end already. And that Raiders uh, wide receiver, he's going to be their wide receiver one. So he's going to get loads of volume. And Demario Douglas. Um, I think just with uh, with the rookie QB now being in there and playing all right, you know what I mean? I think, I'm not saying he's going to be great, but I think the only way for him is up. Like, I don't think he's going to, like, I think he's only going to get better. Um, So if he needed wide receivers and he already has a good tight end, which he probably does, because like I said, Otten, he wouldn't have been drafted as your first tight end. He would have been your backup. Or maybe he's just picked him up off waivers. Who knows? And then he's got two wide receivers for him. Personally, I... If that is the circumstances, I don't mind it. Like, I think it is pretty even, to be honest. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a Jacoby Myers fan. And Demario Douglas, I haven't really heard that name in fantasy relevancy in the last I couple of years. I, I mentioned this briefly uh, yesterday um, as well. See, in Orkney scoring, what I've realised in general, just like as a general rule of thumb to go by, see if there's a guy, if you're in a draft and he's got a can, all right, he's good for a touchdown now and again. Or there's a guy who gets volume. In Orkney scoring, volume is king. Like, the more volume you get, the more chances you've got of getting these first down points, reception points, all the rest of it. So, J- Jacoby Myers, even though you watch him play and he does nothing, seeing Orkney scoring, he's just one of the, he might be one of these disgusting players that scores you 15, 20 points because he had six receptions, four first downs, and 50 yards. And there you go, you've got 15 points. Eh? So, in Orkney scoring, because he's a wide receiver one for that team, um, that's he's probably better than what, what you think he is. Do you know what? You, yeah, you're all yeah. right, Martin. You're all right. Cause I, I, was, I was on the wrong league when I look, looked at his scoring, but I've gone on the Orkney scoring. And to be fair, his last two games, he's had 20 and 25. So, you're all right. It might be a... Uh... Wow. Yeah, I'm way off base. Yeah. Yeah, good job, Cowboys. I might be, maybe, maybe might be one of them where Otten is better because in Orkney, I'm sure he's ranked quite, what is he? Yeah, so he's tight. Don't get me wrong for like, for, 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 for one position, Otten is, is, is the guy. Like, see if you had like one flex spot, Otten is the player you would play. But you're getting, if you're short at wide, wide receiver, you're getting a good wide receiver plus Another one, if you're, you know what I mean. So I think if that's the case, like it's probably a fair trade for both sides. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. I can see All that. Right, so do you have a winner in this trade, Martin? Um, 
I can't, I see, and I think it's actually quite an even trade. Like I think if you're needing, if you're just trying to improve your team for one spot, like I said, just say it's like you've got one flex spot. Otten is out, going to outscore the other two guys, but the upside of the other side is right. You've got a good player who's still going to score well. Plus, you've got that depth. If if that's what you want, if if you need that, if you've got bye weeks, injuries, whatever. So I actually think it's a pretty even trade. Uh, so I, I'm saying personally for my team, because where I am in my team, I would personally have I would have Otten, but. I'm not in the same circumstance as the Kirk Ball Cowboys. Right. Before we move on, yes, how are you, you doing in your league? Sorry? How are you doing in your league this year? Uh, I'm, doing, I'm, I'm having a good season this season. <laughs> yeah, what's that record? <laughs> yeah, what's that record? <laughs> uh, uh, my, my record, I'm good. Go, go for this. It's not even <laughs> <more. It's nine laughs> Oh, oh, really? Look at him telling me humble. He's telling me humble with that. No, <laughs> that's the best you can do. Nine and O coming yep. here with that trash. To be fair, I was oh, I was worried. I was. Uh, to be fair, I can still lose it, but it's, it would be a big upset if I lost it this week now. But it uh, hurts in that first half for the Eagles. He got sacked three drops, uh, drop backs in a row, and he was sitting on seven points or something. Okay? And I was like, oh my, this this was going to cost me. Uh, but second half. Uh, Hearts decided to show up. <laughs> I, I wasn't complaining. I was complaining about how injured my, my team is. Just uh, it's never been not injured. I like I've been setting my team uh, like on game day for ten weeks. I, I I just want to set my team on a on a Thursday and be happy yeah, for the team. Yeah, 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 that's impossible. I'll run you through. So I. All right. Well, I'm going to. Oh, sorry, Bez. I walked all over you there. I was just. Gonna, I am going oh. to say that uh, Bez, you go ahead and finish. Again, I apologize. It's all right. So I'm four. I've won four in a row. It should have been five. I should be joint top, but I didn't change single Terry on my bad. Because if I changed him, I would have won that match up. But I literally, I feel sorry for all the teams I'm playing in this league because literally my four wins, like my quarterbacks I played. In Orkney this year are disgusting. I played, I'm playing Derek Carr constantly, but I beat teams with Daniel Jones, Tyler Huntley. Tyler, how did you win with Tyler? Bonix. <laughs> Bonix. Um, Derek Carr. Oh, oh, Nick's is the top 10 QB in fantasy scoring. I'm just so. riding Derek Carr this whole season. I'm just taking teams out. <laughs> wow, nice. I'm, I'm, nice. I've literally destroyed, like, highest score in my league, 248.96 this week. Like, with Derek Carr. It's fucking great. Love it. Nice. Nice. Well, I think I played the uh, the the... the, the the higher scoring teams early in the season. I, I, I think I have the highest points against in my league. And so I'm coming on to the, the softer schedule. So I have been winning uh, a few more games than I had in the past. Four and six. Yeah. I'm going to win this week. So we'll see if I can break 500 this year <laughs> and, and avoid division four. All right, Paul, your fantasy team is loving proof that you're better being lucky than good. <laughs> hey, or I just have, I'm a mad genius. I am a mad genius. Uh, <laughs> I got Braylon Allen as a starting running back. You're fucking mad. What in the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> that late, that, that's anyway. Cool. Jesus Christ. Yeah, but I think he scored like 11 points yesterday. Braylon Allen. Anyway. It's not bad for a backup running back, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. So I am going to admit that Martin has changed my mind on this trade, and I will agree with you, Martin. Uh, I would say this is a draw, Jacoby Myers being the number one wide receiver in Las Vegas, and Mario Douglas, Johnny mentioned, scored 11 points. All right, let's get to the next one. All right, we have St. Magnus in Division One between the Dublin Everton Blues. They're in tenth place at three and six. They receive AJ Brown, and they only have to give up the oft injured Michael Pittman Jr. and the always 
underperforming Ramondre Stevenson. Pez, thoughts? This one is more lopsided than the last one. Like, I know Stevenson's been playing well, but Pittman is literally just a non-factor. And to get AJ Brown for them two. Are these two mates or are they one of them paying the other one off or something? Well, they're both it looks like they're just trying to avoid relegation at this point. I don't know how you're trying to do that with Pittman. And twelfth position, right? I am not sure what the uh, you know, and, and of course we don't know the overall records. Two and seven could be two games out in their playoffs. Who knows? But Martin, what do you think of this one? Well, this trade that uh, I think it went down before Pittman was ruled out. Uh, like I'm not big on Pittman at all, to be honest with you. Like I, I just thought that was just like okay, you're getting somebody you can on a bye week or an injury, you can just stick him in and kind of hope for the best. Like, I didn't think that was it. Ramondi's another one of these guys, like, like I've got Kamara, and and I like, uh, and, like, Kamara's the same as Ramondi, just, well, better in a way, but they're just disgusting in the way they score points. They get that much volume that they score, like, so much points. So I'm just going to check, like, Ramondi. I don't know. How he's been doing. I'm just checking him now. My phone. Well, I should check that part. So, okay, last, like last night, uh, yes, against the Bears, he only scored 12 points, 13 points. That's not great. But the two games before that, Ramondre had scored 28 points and 26. So, as I'm saying, he's one of these, another one. He's he's a volume monster. He's not a great footballer, but he's a volume monster and he, and he can put up big weeks. And for somebody, I've traded for AJ Brown, so I've, I missed his injury at the start of the season. Like, I got him, I traded for him afterwards. But the AJ Brown owner, he's like, right, I've lost you for four weeks. You've put up points one week. You went out injured last week. And then this, I remember this went down uh, earlier in the week where he was, it looked like AJ Brown might not play this week. So I know, like, when you look at it like that, you're like, right, okay, AJ Brown, that's obvious pick. But see, when you put in circumstance, I can understand an AJ Brown owner who's had him from the start of the season, had to go through all these injuries, being like, you know what? Give me a wide receiver that I can plug in and play when I need to. And Ramondre, he's just like a, a volume guy eh, who can put up 26 points in a week. I just, for me, you make sense with what you're saying. It's just like AJ Brown, it is interesting with the injuries, but it's like, at least get someone else except Pitt, Pittman who's serviceable because one, he's done nothing all year. Two, he's playing through this back injury and the Colts just look like an absolute shit show right now. So when you then look at it and go, I do see where you're coming from and it is, that's the thing with all the, like I always say to Johnny, he's done his scoring so well because you can generate points from everywhere. I just don't know if... I didn't check his uh, what his games coming up are. I do know you. you... Uh, Ramondre has a bit boom or bust. Mm. He has. He can be a bit. Oh. Maybe not full boom bust, but he, he 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 can be very average. But then he does have those upside weeks. But then to be. But I agree with like. See 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 that Pittman. I have to agree. I'm not. I would have liked somebody else instead of yeah. Pittman as well. Like I've I've not been really before. when you're giving up AJ Brown. I do get where you're coming from because sometimes you get that frustrated with a guy who you've drafted high, they've just busted, you just kind of like, it's like rage quitting, isn't it? You're just rage quitting on them and just get them off my fucking team. I've had enough of them. I do get that. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, exactly. but I, I, I can, with what you're saying, because that's one angle I don't really look at, do you know, volume and stuff like that with how Johnny's done the scoring. Ramondre, he might, have, he might pull a blinder off towards when it matters the most to not get relegated because they've got the Rams next that it could have a bad game but then he goes Miami Colts uh, Cardinals and Bills when it matters the most and the Bills really struggle against pass catching running backs and that's something Ramondre does to an okay level like well if Ramondre can get back to the form he's shown in previous years he, he can do it at a really good level so Gibson like I tried telling my mates who said he, he's going to be a factor this year, is a non-factor anyway. So, with the looking at the volume of it, he might get a steal on this trade 
solely because where it matters the most, he might pick up the wins through Ramondre to keep him from getting relegated because these two look like they're in a relegation battle at the moment. Like I, I have AJ, but I'm saying I've got him. And he, like even last night, see through the first two quarters or something, he was looking like he was going to AJ. It looked like he was going to be a dud. Like he looked like he was only just going to score like four. He only had three points, four points, but then he got a couple of big passes and then ended up. Well, he got his he, he got his predicted points. He got eighteen or nineteen points, AJ. Yeah. So and then but that's what I'm saying. If we just use this weekend as an example, AJ Brown scored eighteen points in Orkney and Ramondre scored twelve and a half. So, I mean, obviously, AJ was obviously the better pick this week, but Ramondre has, like, Ramondre does have that opportunity to put big, big, big points. And I think the downside to this is I would probably side with the AJ side just because I'm not big on Pittman. Like, I don't know if you've really gained much. I think that's a clever trade. See, sometimes when you're doing a trade, you just put a big name in, some a name that somebody recognises, and then that can get you a trade over the line. And I'm maybe thinking that's what's happening. Yeah, because... If you look at AJ well, Brown coming up, when you talk volume, he's got Washington next. Lattimore's going to come in. They have uh, uh, Saint Saint Juice, who's all right. So their secondary could get better, but at the moment you can kind of throw on him. So AJ could go off there. The Rams are looking all right. Then he's got the Ravens, and we've already spoke about that. He could have a massive game against them. Um, oh, Johnny's chucking in inside jokes here. <laughs> but then it's like where it matters the most. Like if Washington do then get solid by the back end of the year with Lattimore there, then he's got to face the Steelers and Washington and Dallas back to back to back in the weeks that matter the most, whether he's going to then get relegated or not. So it'd be an interesting one to... Uh, Johnny will have to keep us updated with uh, how these two do yeah. on the around uh, the I, I podcast. I'm go with the A.J. Brown side just because... Uh... You know, big weeks. AJ Brown could go off for 35, 40 points one week and, you know, guarantee you a victory. Well, I mean, how many weeks do you see Stevenson or Pittman going off for 30? Hardly ever. Uh, I mean, Pittman might be done for the season. We don't know. He might just decide to get surgery now. That's the thing. Well, the thing is, Pittman, if you remember, about four weeks ago, they called him out for the season because he was going to have surgery. And then literally two days later, they came back and said, nope, he's going to play through it. So they could be calling his season at any moment. They really could. So I wouldn't be surprised, actually. But I, I like Pittman. I think his QB situation is untenable. But uh, so who do you have a, a real quick winner, A.J. Brown side or the Pittman side? Martin? Uh, I would side with AJ. AJ. Pez? Yeah, I'll go with the AJ side. Fair enough. 3 0 AJ side. Well done, mates. Let's go to the next one, Johnny. Dwarfy Stain Division 4. The Birmingham Bears getting the rookie, Xavier Leggett. While the Plymouth Assassins has traded for Jonathan Brooks, that has. That was ruled out yet again. Uh, to me, this looks like a trade just to make trades at the end of the season. Uh, the Bears perhaps adds depth in their wide receivers while giving up next to nothing in Brooks, really. But who knows? Maybe he will uh, roar back in the second half of the season. Martin, thoughts? Well, I- it's quite funny. I've tried to see since like week two. I've been trying to get uh, just just because I thought upside for the playoffs. Like you're not expecting it to actually probably work, but you're just thinking, oh, it might happen. I've tried to change for for Jonathan Brooks in loads of leagues, and I've probably offered more than what has uh, went down here. And I, I never got up. I gave up trying to get him two weeks ago. Like nobody, all these teams that drafted them in the fifth. They've all got losing records, but nobody wants to let go of them. So I gave up trying to trying to get them. But uh, in a dynasty like, league, I'd love to have Brooks. In a redraft yeah. league, I don't know. No, it's more for like you're taking a punt on the upside. Eh? You're just thinking, right? If he if he is as good as what he was in college, and then he just takes NFL by storm during the end of the season, that could win you a fantasy league. Eh? You're, you're, it's like it's one of those trades you try and make. 
just to try and win a yeah. win a championship, basically. Yeah, he's two and seven, trying to uh, avoid Division Five, I guess. Yeah, it's. <laughs> but I'm I'm just trying to look at like uh, Scone because he's the wide receiver one now, and uh, in Carolina, so he might just be another one of those guys where he might just get loads of opportunities, and he might get yeah, a lot of points, like. That's just what I'm saying. He's like yesterday he put up nine points, but the two weeks before that he put up seventeen and eighteen. So I don't know. He might be a guy like a flex, like you're, yeah. you're getting a flex yeah. guy. You can play in the flex. So cover some buys. So the, for me, looking at this straight out of the bat is the guy who's in first. I'm guarantee he doesn't need Leggett because no one like. There's no if you if you if you needed a wide receiver, there's no point doing this because they play the Chiefs, the Bucks, the Eagles, the Cowboys. Well, that could be they could be facing the Cowboys, so like the fifth seed by that point. The Cardinals, the Bucks, <laughs> the Falcons. I don't see how they win, except for the Cowboys, a single one of them games. Um <laughs> But I don't. Even the Cowboys. Yeah, the the Giants, the even the Cowboys. Yeah, See, I mean, if you beat the Giants, they can beat anyone. Even the Cowboys, solely because the Cowboys' defense and secondary is still good enough to make Bryce Young shit his pants. Like I don't see him winning a single one of them games. At, watching Texas, like following Texas the last couple of years, like Jonathan Brooks is an absolute monster, and I get it. Everyone wants to see Jonathan Brooks on college. If we get that. But I just look at the Plymouth Assassins as, like Johnny said, they can't get relegated. They're two and seven. Like, they're punting on Jonathan Brooks, as Martin said, doing what college is. But realistically, the things I've been reading is the Panthers are going to bring him back, but they're not, like, they've just paid Tuba Hubbard, like, massive. And he's literally going to sit behind Tuba Hubbard the whole year. That's what I read. They're not going to rush him back, even when he's back healthy playing, they're going to ease him back in because what's the point in killing him in a season where they're doing nothing? I agree with the, like I'm saying, uh, this is something I've, like, I've tried to trade for Brooks, but like I'm saying, you're, you're, that's just like a, it's like a 5% play. Like I, like my personal opinion in this is Hubbard's going to be the main guy. I even think he'll be next season as well. I actually, like, see if I was in a draft for next season. Unless the scout, uh, the summer reports and training camp come out really positive for Brooks, if I was to draft either of these guys in redraft right now, I would draft Hubbard because I just think he's the safest one. Yeah, to be best ball. All right, I can understand why the Bears got legged because Johnny just posted their wide receiver uh, roster there. They have Demarcus Robinson, Juan Jennings, Lockett. Uh, I'm guessing that's Keenan Allen, uh, Samuel, and Scary Terry. That's not, you know, a strong wide receiver room there especially uh, when you need to play three in orkney so yeah, uh, uh, and one dell robinson <laughs> well that's that's yeah, a game changer fair. yeah so, you're probably, so he's probably going to play jennings mclaurin and then he'll probably he probably will he might play like it in that third wide receiver it'll be between him and debo walk it maybe you know, no you know no so smart great do you know what what did that nine is game last night jennings is he he, he he's Technically, got a wide receiver one there because he's literally just playing Brandon Ayuk's role. Now, if Ricky Pearsall, who was getting a lot of like a lot of targets and look yeah, yesterday, no. was that? Yeah, uh, Pearsall scored a few points yesterday. He did well. He 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 potentially he nearly got two touchdowns. Like he got his first touchdown, but he nearly got two yesterday. Like Purdy, Purdy clearly likes him, so it'd be an interesting one, yeah. but. Jennings seemed to be doing the Ayuk roll. Debo was on his bullshit, yeah, running him. around, bloody running, catching, falling over, getting hurt. Nineteen point eight points yesterday, and the week before the bye, he scored uh, fourteen against the Cowboys. So you know, Parasol's looking good. Mm. But back to the trade, uh, Pez. The winner, the Bears are the assassins. The Bears. What do you think? Bears. Martin. Uh, I just I think it's a 50-50, to be honest with you. I don't think there's uh, much in it. 
Mm. I am going for a push, but giving the Bears props for strengthening their wide receiver room. All right, Johnny, I think we have one more. Is that right? Show us his mind, Ah, here we go. This is a very interesting trade. In the my old division, the four more may show division two. Four more. <laughs> the dig- huh? Did Johnny just say four more trades? By the way, this division, see this division, this is the division you want to be in, right? It's trade yeah. mad. And from okay. first place to eleventh, eleventh, there's like one one in it. Like any like everyone's in this division, everyone's six and four. Like everyone. <laughs> it's ma- that this is the division you want That's- to be in. So we're going to have to speed up our analysis, all right, because we're already 50 minutes in and we have four more trades to talk about. So let's keep the comments quick and snappy on the the next few here. So we got the Dickens Heath Demons, six and three in first place with the crew juggernauts at second with the same six and three record. The Demons receive DJ Moore and Jackson Smith Najiba while they send Brian Robinson to the juggernauts. Pez. Thoughts. Um, just on the base surface of it, without looking too deep into it, it looks quite fair to me. Brian Robinson has been struggling with an injury. You don't know, is he? Is it one of them nigglers? Is he going to have that all season? Is that going to hold his production down? If not, that's great. Jackson Smith and Jigbert, if the Seahawks don't watch that Rams game on repeat and go, right, well, I know we got DK Metcalf, but this kid's fucking amazing. Then he yeah. could literally be a fantasy like he could be fancy dynamite for the sec like the second half of the year for any team. And DJ Moore, he's gonna have his games. He seems to be getting pissed with Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams is just shit. Obviously he's not. He's got yeah, the talent, he's but he's playing like dog shit. Um but Eberflus is gonna get himself sacked soon, but then might just release the whole offense and by the back end of the year, DJ Moore could start getting you some fantasy points because they don't need to win, do they, to, to get them up. So it looks quite even on the very base surface of it to me. All right. Yeah, Martin? Uh, I think I'm really similar to Pez. Like, I think the DJ moore Jackson side has the bigger upside. I think Brian uh, Robinson has the safer four. But I think the biggest thing about this trade is it's first place and second place trading with each other. I mean... See, when I'm making trades in leagues, I try not, like, so I'm in first. I would not be wanting to trade with, like, second or third. So I think that's the biggest thing about this trade. It's first and second trade. But seeing as, you, seeing as you could lose one game and drop to 11th, then... <laughs> then <laughs> what a great league. I like what the team said here, as I believe um, Pez said earlier. It's a three-wide receiver league with a couple of flex spots having a couple of solid wide receiver options. I like that. I like what the Demons did. I would give the Demons the the nod here. Pez, you? Yeah, I'll go with the Demons side, personally, myself. Because he's got a seal. Uh, I'll go with the crew, because it's the safer floor. I think I'll take that. Excellent. All right. Johnny, let's get to the next one. All right. Another one in the same (laughs) uh, division, the Bonnie Rig Cheeseheads in ninth place at four and five against the Portland Lumberjacks with the same four and five record in eighth place. Another one of those eight, nine, one, two type trades. The cheese heads received Devonte Smith and Najee Harris while the Lumberjacks received Tyree kill. And I will go ahead and go first here. I certainly like the cheese heads move here. Najee Harris is quietly having a great year for the Steelers as I predicted and Devonte Smith He's not going to have the weekly 20-point games, but he will bust out with his 25, 30 points every three or four weeks. And he's always a solid 10 to 15-point contributor. Tyree Kill is injured. The quarterback situation is always iffy in Miami. Uh, Tyree Kill might miss the next two or three games. Who knows? So I would give the edge to the Cheeseheads. Martin, what are you thinking? Uh, every other year, like this trade was done before Tyreek was injured, by the way. Uh, but okay. every other year, I would have took the Tyreek side. But just for this year, I think I am on the Devonta and Najee side of this one. Yeah, I'll, with the way right. Najee's playing and with 
Russ being quarterback and he has that balance of knowing how to feed the running back, get them into play them good positions and stuff like that. The cheese heads are, I think have got the one just with the how my right. playing at the moment. Three zero the cheese heads. And by the way, I'm not saying getting Tyree Kill is a bad option, as you said, he was this was before the injury. But uh, Dolphins just look I'm a bit broken taking... at the moment, don't they? That's right. Unless you have a chain, apparently. All right, let's get to the next one, Johnny. Yeah, no. <laughs> All right. I want to be in this division. division. This division's had... chaos. Kil- Kilmarnock Kings at fourth with the six and three. Wow, six and three and what fourth. Was that? And the number one is six. What, what was that name? The... <laughs> Kilman Kil- Kilmarnock Kings. <laughs> 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 How do you say it, Pez? You say it, it's Kilmarnock. Uh, again? Kilmarnock. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to take an English class to learn how to speak English. Kilmarnock. <laughs> oh my <laughs> against the Belfast bench warmers with <laughs> Martin's cracking up here. With the five and four record. Scottish class. There you go. I need to take, I need to take a Scottish class here. Oh my God. All right. So they get DeAndre Hopkins, the new wide receiver one toy for Mahomes, while the bench warmers receive DeAndre Smith. And I will go ahead and go first in uh, the thinking about the time. I am definitely going with the Hopkins side here, hands down. I've never been a DeAndre Swift fan. The Bears' offense is broken. Iberflus has no idea what he's doing. Uh, hands down, Hopkins. Pez? Um, I'm with you. I'm not a big Swift guy, but to be honest, except for against New England, he's... 20 plus points, 30 plus points every single week for five straight. So I'm going to have to stay. Mm, 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 no, change my mind. I'll go with the Hopkins. I'll trust in Mahomes because I've just seen his schedule going forward. Yeah, carry right. on. Just Hopkins. Gonna be yes. Martin? Well, I was going to say it was, I guess, pretty, I think it's an even trade, to be honest, but I'm just going to Swift's points here. He scored. From week four, he scored 36, 25, 26, 26, 20, and then last night he only scored 10. I mean, with those points, I mean, you have to, I think you have to go the Swift side just because of what he's done, but who knows? This might be the downward, the the downward spiral now, but I don't like Swift at all. Either I'm the same, but I was going to, it's either, it's pretty. I'm probably just going to go even, but Swift has put up big points. I was going to say that, but then look from week 12. So against Green Bay next week, he'll probably have another big game. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, Swift. But then he goes, the Vikings, Detroit, San Francisco, the Vikings, Detroit. That could could derail. I I will let you guys in on a little uh, trade that I made in preseason. I really don't like Swift at all. I traded – I had Swift on my team on an orphan, and I traded him for Jalil McClellan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Should we get on to the next yeah. one? Yeah, let's do the next one, Johnny. Wow, some big names here. Mullhead Division Four. These are the trades I love. The oh, this is my division. The Bucks in fourth place. At six and three, six and three and fourth. Wow, the top heavy league here receives the broken Cowboys wide receiver offense, CD Lamb, while the Yorkshire Los Murtos, Murtis at 10th place and three and six receives Jonathan Taylor and Tank Bigsby. Again, I will go ahead and go first in interest of time. Uh, I am a Jonathan Taylor fan. I was predicting top three running back numbers this year. However, that hasn't happened. Uh, Bigsby has been a surprise. While Lamb has been consistently above average, (laughs) but not the great Lamb that he was last year, uh, I would still probably take 
the Lamb side on this trade uh, if Dak was healthy. Without Dak, I'll go with the Jonathan Taylor side. Martin, what about you? Uh, I'm just assuming, like, position-wise, that, like, okay, one needs a receiver and one needs a running back. So I'm just going to take that out of it. I'll let you know now. Uh, I don't. I don't think Tank Bigsby is anything in this trade. Like I think he's just like he's just nothing. Uh, and judge it, but just see after watching that Cowboys offense last night. I'm sorry, yeah, I would take yeah, Jonathan yeah. Taylor every day of the week right now. That, yeah, that, yeah. that was, you know what? That was unprofessional last night by the Cowboys. That's how bad that was. It wasn't that. It, it wasn't like the players weren't good enough. It, it was just poor in every way like they just want it was like they weren't ready to play an nfl game eh? so i'm so i i couldn't i couldn't pick any a uh, cowboys player right now so this is my division and i love the fact that stevie took cd lamb and gave away jonathan uh, taylor and tanks bigsby because yeah. even though etn is probably still the one tanks bigsby still can put points because at the moment in our division from first to sixth, there's two games in it. I think at the moment, except for the guy in six, the top five are all winning. We're all winning. So um, first is on seven and two. There's three of us on six and three, and then one on uh, two on five and four. So it looks like one of them is going to drop to five and five, but everyone else is winning and moving up. So I just think, but the thing, this, what was it? Cause I was looking at Stevie's team and he's got uh, Kareem Hunt, James Connor, Rashad White, Tyron Tracy, Brian Robinson, and they're all his running backs. So you can see why oh, he's oh. let Jonathan yeah, Taylor go. Yeah. To try and then get CD Lamb because his wide receivers are Devontae Adams, C. Well, he played CD, so Devontae Adams, CD Lamb, uh, Deontay Johnson, um, Westbrook Akini, but he's getting Mike Evans back after the bye. So, really, when you look at that, his wide receivers aren't that good, so he's trying to take a punt because he's got yeah, such yeah. good depth in his. Uh, his running backs, I feel like he's just trying to take a punt on CD and he probably watched that game last night and cried his little eyes out, even though he won his game. <laughs> and I just, yeah, I'm just i just laughing because the way the Cowboys looked, CD might as well just go on holiday now and not get injured, save himself. Yeah, you know, we, should, we should be throwing in the towel, hoping for a top five pick. Next year's draft is stacked in the top ten. You know, we should not be... You know, if he wants to move on from Dak, we got two great quarterback options next year, right? The mobile guys that Jerry Jones likes. Who, who, who's your two, just out of interest? Cam Ward. Uh, you also have uh, Shador Sanders. I probably would not take either if it was me. I think Shador Sanders is being propped up by his dad. But uh, mm. who knows? Martin, you watch college ball at all? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I I just I know that. I, but I, I've seen things about that boy. That is it. Travis Hunter. He plays both sides of the ball. Oh, you see, that's Jerry Jones' guy right there. Jerry Jones, drooling. He's, I, I would just. I'd love to see things like that. But like it's like. See for me, come up makes me buzz about the Ravens this year. It's seeing the King and Lamar together, and see somebody being able to play both sides of the ball. I'd love to just see that, just to see if it yeah. works. Deion Sanders, right? Back in the Cowboys, Travis Hunter. So Travis Hunter, I was, I, I like, like the last couple of years I've got into college ball and then I've got ways now where I can watch it weekly without having to rely on Sky Sports feed. And I was interested in this Colorado game against Texas Tech. I know they weren't doing well in the first half at all. Um, and it looked like they were going to get beat. And then... I went. I, I was out at fireworks. Looked back in the second half. Travis Hunter was nowhere to be seen. hadn't had a reception or anything. Finished. He had sixteen targets, nine receptions, ninety-nine yards, and a touchdown. Like the, that kid is filthy. Yeah. That kid. He's a top five guy in both positions. He should be winning the Heisman if there was any common sense in voting. <laughs> By the way, <clears throat> Arkansas Razorback hat. <clears throat> so, Pets, uh, who do you have as the winner here? Real quick, one word. 
I'll go. Bucks? I'll go, yeah, the Jonathan Taylor side for me. Jonathan Taylor. All right. So all three of us went the Taylor side. 